So again, welcome to Art Across the Globe. Uh, Swati Biswas is with uh, Artsy Way of Life and she has put this workshop together for us. So I'm going to introduce Swati and also um, thank you to Mihir, who's the artist for today, who's gonna to be focusing on the Warley um, Indian traditional painting. So thank you Swati so much for coming and um, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Thank you, Athena. I am so glad uh, to be able to connect um, all of you who joined here today um, on a very wintry cold morning uh, with, with art, artists from India. And, and that's one thing for India, right? There are just so much wealth in art and culture. Um, and I am doing a little bit uh, my part to bring some of those together. So, uh, so very grateful for your participation here today and very grateful to NCCD for supporting this. Um, I am going to uh, ask everyone when Mihir starts teaching, maybe pin his, um, his video on, on your screen because I think um, everyone has to do it on their computer to, to make it the bigger, bigger screen for you to watch. Um, Athena is going to record, but the way we usually do it, I'm going to do a very, very quick PowerPoint presentation to give you some background about Worley, a little bit about Mihir, uh, who is our artist instructor today, and then I will let him teach us the art form. So. Can all of you see my presentation? Okay. So what is Worley art? Worley painting is- Sh Sh Shati, no, we cannot, we just see your uh, file explorer screen, screen. We cannot see your uh, PowerPoint presentation. Oh, okay, let me- Maybe you can share your primary screen and then probably it will yeah, pop up. Yeah, yeah that's, what, that's what I did. Let me just double check. Yeah, let's go ahead. And then let's share. Yes. No. But I want to share this, right? There we go. That's it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, you see it now, right? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so, worldly painting is a form of tribal folk art, mostly created by the tribal people from um, from uh, North uh, Sadri uh, range, which is cities including the Hanu, Talsari, Jauhar, uh, Palghar, and all of those uh, areas are in Maharashtra, India. This tribal art was or originated in Maharashtra, Maharashtra, where it is still practiced today. And um, Mihir actually lives in Maharashtra. He lives in Mumbai. The Worldly tribe is one of the largest in India located outside of Mumbai. Despite being close to one of the largest cities in India, most of them reject much of contemporary culture. Um, worldly paintings of Maharashtra revolve around the marriage of God uh, Palghat T. The tribal style of art is believed to date back as early as 10th century AD. So it, you will see it's, it's very, um, it, it looks very much like a lot of ancient folk arts uh, that we see from other countries as well. Um, so Mihir does authentic fusion thematic worldly art. He is a Limca book record holder for 2019 for doing the longest worldly painting in, in a very short time. And he can tell 
asks about that when, when he comes on screen. He also does worldly paintings on other mediums like clothing items, t-shirts, saris, etc. Besides worldly, he also does 3D wall art and realistic portrait paintings. These are some of the worldly based art um, that Mihir has shared with me so that I can show all of you. Um, the cultural and economic significance is the worldly culture is based on elements of nature that became the focal point. Um, this tribe greatly respect nature and wildlife for the resources. Farming is their primary way of life. Worldly artists use their clay huts as the backdrop for their paintings, like how ancient people used cave walls as their canvas. And Jivya Soma Mase, the artist in Thane district, made this painting very popular and has been honored with a number of national and central level awards for his paintings. In the year 2011, he received Padma Shri from Government of India. And um, I just wanted to thank everyone today uh, for joining and um, especially Mihir uh, from India uh, who will be teaching us and Athena and NCCD um, for their support. And I will stop sharing now so that um, I and hand it over to Mihir to show us this beautiful art form. Uh, hello everyone. I hope I'm visible. Uh, right now I'm I will be seen on the screen afterwards. I, my I will show, just you will just see my hands because uh, the space is not all uh, comfortable. So it's a very very simple art and a very unique art form. And you can you will be enjoying that thing because everything in this art form is based on the nature and the natural things which people have seen and uh, they have uh, pretended or predicted to draw. So it's very easy, very simple, and a very fun-loving activity. So we'll start with this right now. So Varli painting is generally based on the nature and what the tribal have seen throughout the years. So in Varli painting, Majorly, uh, for they do right now, even right now, is on the wall of their uh, houses. So in the village area, they have the houses of made up of the mud and uh, bamboos. So they just spread the cow dung and the mud uh, on the wall, and they paint it with the natural gum which comes from the tree, and uh, mix it in the rice rice flour, the white rice flour. So you can see that the rice, uh, white color of the painting and the background, which is brown, that is cow dung and the mud, which is mixed and uh, put put on the wall. So this is the this is their daily activity. So in Varli painting, the two important figures which we generally use is male and female. So I will explain you what exactly how this is made and why it is made. So basically both are similar. What differentiates them is male has a ponytail, female is exactly same but that's the difference. So now people ask why the figures are in the triangular form or the head, neck, the hands and the legs are in the, what we say, stick form. So basically, uh, Varni tribes, the people live in the, uh, what we say, forest area and uh, on the hill, hill region. So long back when they saw, when we see this portion, so in the natural form, we see we see this in the sun, moon, or uh, any fruit which is round. So this structure or this figure was taken from majorly from this. So Varli artists, Varli uh, tribes 
took this uh, circular uh, form for the from the sun and the moon the stick or the neck is uh, like they have seen that, that in the trees bamboos so bamboos are straight so basically first of all varli is not what we say a structural art form or the geometric art form it is a free hand and it has it doesn't have any uh, shape or uh, what we say a proper form a proper formation so it is like it is a free hand drawing which anyone can do the anyone can do right now in india where i stay right now i am teaching people varli art varli art or around i can just say my youngest student is right now 83 years old uh, uncle so he is also willing to learn this thing so he can also learn and a uh, 5 years old kid can also learn this thing so it's very very simple art form now the triangle now we all know in our uh, younger age when we used to go to school we used to draw the uh, sceneries and everything and we used to use the this thing for the mountain so this thing came from the mountain so they use the mountain shape for the body portrait and again the hands and the leg for the uh, what we say uh, from the trees area so basically overall of this uh, varli figure is made up of or you can say it is coming up from a uh, natural habitats so it's very very natural painting we can say that uh, we will start with that so these two figures are most important you can just draw this thing i'll wait so we will be working on these two figures only i will be explaining you more about the actual varli so you will get to learn and you will get to know about that thing just let me know when you are done so i can just uh, erase it off Yeah, we done. I think so, Mihir. Thank you. Okay, okay. So, so these are for the human figures. This both uh, are gen. These two figures are generally used for male and female, and every varli painting has this figures only so varli generally varli painting uh, we can i can just say you like uh, any any other painting form like abstract form or any scenerical form or a uh, scenery painting which, which we see just like that varli is also a form wherein varli tribes or the varli people the, the adivasi people have just shown their daily routine or daily lifestyle in their painting in just form of a uh, 2d art form so basically varli tribes they had the daily routine of fishing and then uh, cattle cattle breeding and everything that and they were having also the, doing farming they were doing pottery so everything the every possible uh, daily routine of a varli tribe is shown and depicted in the varli painting and that is what it is carried out or carried on from the what we say 2005 year 500 years old art form till date so if any of the varli artists uh, uh, you ask any of the varli artists okay, what varli is so they will just say it's a routine and the daily uh, natural way of living of a varli art varli uh, adivasi tribe which they just depict in the uh, painting form so that, this is the male and the figure form secondly uh in the varli uh, villages there are houses so how the houses are generally made i can just show you that it's very very simple so 
I will tell you one thing. This shouldn't be straight. Why? I will tell. This shouldn't be straight because this are almost taken from the trees or the branches of the tree. So branches of the trees are never straight. You will, you might be knowing they are crooked. They are uh, uh, any way, any shape other than straight. So this, this has to be bit the way I have drawn. So it is not straight line. This can be straight because this can be or cannot be. This is these are bamboos which they use. Secondly, this is also bamboo which they have used for their uh, houses, house making houses. So it can be straight. It cannot be straight because bamboos are also not straight. You might know that that all the bamboos are not that uh, in the straight form. Afterwards, the dome portion. This basically. Is the grass dried grass which they use? So we can just show like this. Now house has a door again, which is made up of bamboo. So generally, as I said, you the houses walls uh, are covered with mud and uh, powder in the Warley village uh, till date. So they just cover this thing and they paint it on their wall also. So that is the, uh, the this is generally done on the wedding wedding scenes in the Warley village. So generally now it is done for the weddings because it is uh, it is uh, thought that it is auspicious to be uh, done. And to do the Varli art on their house and the, when there is a wedding in their house. So you can just draw this. We'll continue further there. Okay. So, Varli house, Varli figures, human male and female, Varli house. So when there is a Varli house, Varli painting a house in a village, there has to be some other other person, some other other lady, some other other ch child to be shown in the in the scene because being a village, not the village uh, what you know about the in Indian culture right now, but this village is from the ancient time or the ancient uh, art form. So there, that time they had no proper road or no nothing. So this is a proper village where they stay in the forest and they have made their houses. So being a village, they have, a, we can show a tree. So in Varli, we generally show a complete tree with the roots. So I will tell you again that these roots are seen, but in the painting, we even show a human figure over here. So don't take it in that form here. This root has to be in the uh, ground. No, I, as I said, you Marley uh, tribes have drawn what they have seen in their daily routine. So they know that there are roots of the tree. So they just drew it. So it is a 2D art form. I can just say that the 2D art form. You can even show a human figure or a cow or a, any other uh, cattle figure even here. So when you, whenever you see a Varni painting, you can see everything. You can just have a look. So you'll get a root. You'll see a human. You can see a, a cow over here. Everything. So this is just a tree. You can just draw the leaves in this form. This is a coconut tree. And show this one or two coconuts. Okay. 
can just draw this thing. We will move forward then. I know I'm finished, Mahir. So if you'd like to continue, okay. <laughs> thank you. Okay, okay, sure, sure, ma'am. So <laughs> being so being a natural uh, habitat of or the natural environment, there has to be each and every kind of uh, bird, insect, animals. Not the wild animals, but the normal uh, animals which are in the village, like cow, sheep, everything. So the animals are on the ground. Now we will be seeing what actually the birds look like in the Warli village. So it's very, very simple. Just a circle with two straight lines. One straight line behind the neck or the neck. One oval. Again, one straight line with a triangle which has some lines. Now the feathers, a semicircle. And we just have to draw feathers in such a way. So now to look it more good, we can just draw some. So the, this is a bird flying. Another thing is bird sitting. So it's just a semicircle with two lines, a neck. Circular neck, circular for the head, the beak, and the ears. What we say is not the ears because uh, I have uh, learned this from the Warli artist who stays in the Wada village, in the tribal. So they just say that these are the ears of the uh, uh, bird, but this is not e uh, the ears, but that is the feather which we see, and then the You can just draw another semicircle in this. You don't show eyes, nose, uh, ears to any of the figures, not to the human figure, not to the what we say, the cow or the animals or the birds also. So this is birds, the bird flying and the bird sitting. I hope I hope you're done. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. The next. Yeah. So this are what we say, the basically what we see in the Varli uh, painting, each and every Varli painting. The major important part about the Varli painting is that they show the sun and the moon in every painting. Now you will ask why the sun and the moon? So as per the scientific reason we know is the sun and the moon are present in the sky. Just when it is a day, we can't see the moon. When it is night, we can't see the sun. So they knew that thing. So they draw both the things and even worship the both. both. They, are, they, they worship even the sun, even the moon. So you just have to draw a sun over here. Simple. The way you used to draw in your finger age when you were young. Just when you draw a sun, you have to draw the face to the sun. Because in India culture, we worship the we worship the sun, or we can say Sur Surya Dev. You have to show a mustache and a face. And now this is for sun, for the moon. You just have to show a semicircular form or the crescent moon and the remaining part in the dotted form. I hope it's visible. It is just that, that thing. Is it? Now it might be visible. So you don't do the eyes or anything? No, the... no, no, no. No, uh, in Indian culture, you might be knowing, ma'am, the sun is worshipped because yes. they, there are many people. Uh, they get up in the morning and they 
uh, what we say uh, show Surya water to the yeah. yeah so that for that reason the, it is uh, shown that and moon is also worshiped but not that much so mm-hmm. it's just the normal moon okay so, so now whenever there is a, a house or a hut or anything there has to be cattle cows or a, a female working because it's not just that the there is, there is a house and we just leave it like that so for that reason they have a cattle house or the area where they put the, uh, they try their uh, cows and buffaloes so we'll see how to draw cow you can just draw a semi circle which is upside down with horns a neck triangular which we show for the what we say human figure a tail and a leg what are the back leg the opposite side i can just show it tied up with some grass so it's the pet cow the domesticated cow yes, 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 that lives yes, with yes. the family right which is yes, which yes. is very common in in the village in side the village farm yeah so now they just just don't uh, tie that cow in the open area so they just make a shed for the cow so it is simple that So Mehir, will you show the family and the children? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Everything, everything. Uh, okay. I will be going step by step. So this oh, okay. is the uh, majorly what we see in the family. Uh, I will be telling about the what we say. The they have uh, a unique uh, uh, instrument, musical instrument, tarpa. This is uh, I am taking this uh, topic on uh, request of Swati Ma'am actually. i never take this topic because the, it's a very unique and they worship that uh, tarpa instrument more musical instrument so that is actually made up of a dried pumpkin and a hollow bamboo stick and uh, it gives you a what we say a sound like a flute but it is not like a flute but a bigger uh, uh, instrument which uh, has a leaf in it roll leaf in it which uh, actually gives the sound uh, of that uh, tarpa so i'll draw it afterwards we'll just see the human figures and everything village view so this is basically for the uh, village where they have this now we will see the daily routine as ma'am said what what are we going to show so we'll just show a you lady who is feeding the hen so now you can just show this to her hand like this you can show a basket i will i will just do uh, draw the basket in the bigger form you will get to know okay and you can just show this in the dotted form she is feeding the hen so now hens can be drawn just a triangle a neck a round form a big small tail and two legs you can just draw two or three and that that small tail a neck and a beak so now she is feeding you can just show this in dotted form and now the basket you can just show it normal basket which you see by just uh, doing some detailation like this that's it mm-hmm. 
just sub this off. <coughs> Okay, I'll move forward. Uh, I will have to drop this painting because I have the limited space. So you can just continue on the page which you are drawing. We will we will do a complete uh, Warli painting or a Warli uh, village view. So you can get a clear, exact uh, view that how it actually looks, and it looks beautiful. Uh, one more thing about Warli painting is it's not. Uh, scattered painting or they don't have that much uh, what we say spacing and everything in between the figures they just clustered everything and that is the actual uh, look of the painting because the more it is clustered the more good it looks so you might see it on the uh, internet and everything the every varli painting is clustered is is like they are in i had made one painting which uh, my one of my client had uh, requested me in uh, paper of i had a paper canvas paper of 2 2 feet by 3 feet in which i had to do almost 2500 figures so you can just imagine 2500 figures in this in this much page so you, it was looking good but they they just like that they just love this page so we had driven a house a kettle house a tree a lady feeding them so now, as ma'am said, uh, the family, the family, you know, we can just show, they just show the family in simple form. Just, it's like a male. So who is the main person of the family? A head with his hands. So he has a stick in his hand. Female or the wife, behind him or beside him, anyhow, behind or beside, it's not compulsion that it is behind, it can be beside with a wood which they use for. Uh, burning or a cooking the what they do is bonfire we say secondly and then thirdly is the kid kid uh as usual all kids are mischievous you can just show three or two ponies for them so it can be any a kid. The kid don't have that uh, differentiation that it is a male or female. Just they have this this thing. So you can just show this. With being a mischievous kid, it won't just walk simply like this. So it has to do something. Now a kid can have a pet goat or a pet dog or even a pet cow. So I just uh, in my paintings I just show a pet goat. So I will draw just draw that thing. So a pet goat you can draw a goat. I will draw here. I will then I will draw here. So you will get to know what exactly it looks like. We just have to show a semicircle with two ears on it. So now this is not the big. This is not generally a big, it is a face which the goat has, but they show it in this form. The neck, another semicircle with a tail and a leg. You can just draw that thing over here. Now it is a pet, so we can just show a string. In the yes, sorry. So now uh, there are there has been many questions from me in many workshops that how 
do we how do they differentiate the ground so it's very simple when you draw the speakers you just have to show some one or two graphs so this is like the base the base of the painting not bigger one the smaller one so this is the family which uh, we show in the varli uh, paintings hope you are done uh, should i raise up this is for yes me here okay so this is for the varli family which they go for from a place or they go to their house so we will see uh being a adivasi or uh, the tribal uh, people <clears throat> generally the men goes for hunting because in that time the in that uh, era hunting was the only source of food which they used to get not only source of food but the what you say they used to do hunting so they even show the that that uh, scenes also ladies used to go or the females used to go to take the uh branches of the trees or the dried up grasses for uh, putting it on the house top or using it for burning so that they can cook food so we will just see the uh, males or the man uh, people who used to go for hunting so how they used to just uh, how they just show that in the painting form so it might be people like three or four we will show i will show three people so similarly a male figure again i am telling you not compulsion that this and this should be a pop in proportion this can be small this can be big this can be big this can be small this has not to, this has no proportion even so you can see many paintings wherein there are no proportion for the varli varli figures that is completely fine because they have no uh, proper uh, proportion to the painting and that is the most beauty of the painting there are many artists varli artists who draw, uh, draw this with the proportional thing but it gives a geometric look we don't want a geometric look we want to give that the natural uh, touch to that so we just draw it uh, as it is so it looks good so a uh, figure uh, a varli human figure male figure so now being a male as i said you you can show a stick in his hand okay secondly same figure just he has an x so how will we show an x is just a straight line with proper formation of x and one more we can show is the third one this walking which has some other other what to say a stick or a small x in it and and yes obviously the grass to show the base of the painting so we just fill this things with the uh, white portion this three things are only filled other than that everything is in the 
white line part so this thing is filled in the white uh, part even today uh, i use the geru which is generally what we call the mud to give that the actual look of the painting so it uh, it is a geru or mud the crushed mud powder mud and uh, i add the gum or what we say fevicol the now now we get fevicol i cannot add the gum so i add the uh, fevicol to it and some amount of water to make the mixture the thick paste mixture and uh, i just spray uh, spread it out on the canvas and let it dry after it gets dry you can just see that the, it looks actually exactly same what it looks like the cow dung so to give the feel and the look of the cow dung i use the mud the geru what we call it. and obviously the paint is uh, uh, after all uh, it might be an acrylic paint a fabric paint or any other poster paint poster i don't use because poster uh, gets cracked sometimes so i use acrylic paint and then when it is dried up i use a varnish clear varnish on it so it gets waterproof so the people who buy it they don't have the issues of uh, what we say the painting getting uh, wear off so it's waterproof so you can just wash it off you can just uh, clean it off with any wet cloth on it so in while painting this is completely filled this is filled other than that everything is just a uh, line part so it is not filled with that me here yes me here. um so a couple of questions when you yeah. put the mud color or geru mixed with gum to fill it yeah. you use brushes right yes yes okay um and um and also um i was thinking where do you get that geru from is it uh, from a store or do you go to a particular region to uh, to get that special kind so uh, i will tell you one thing ma'am you might be knowing in india in diwali time yeah. we draw, we draw the rangoli yes yes so you know that they they spray that uh, brown part beneath yeah. that and we we draw the rangoli yes ha huh, so the brown the brown part which is that the the brown uh, the, the base piece of rangoli yeah that is the gear that is gear oh, okay. and we can get it in the any hardware but general hardware we get it and it okay. is even not costly it is just like 20 rupees it's nothing like nothing for that spec okay. you get a kg kg or 2 2 kg for 20 rupees oh, okay. it's just a mud i see okay thank you Yeah, I think you can go to the next okay. one then. Okay. So we have seen the house, a tree, a kettle, a family, a bird, and people going for hunting. So now there are uh, we will see females who go to the forest. When when they come, actually when they come, they show they don't show when they are going. They show when they are coming. So. like a female figure as we draw you can just show a basket which we drew before on the head and the hand holding the basket the second hand down So this is one figure which we which we can draw it in the varli painting secondly second lady or the second female which you can show is holding the dried up uh branches of the leaves or the wood so now being a female or the lady of the house so they have the most important job in the house as we know they have to handle the house they have to handle the kids they have to handle everything behind the so just like that you can just show a lady
So a small kid holding a small kid can just show the same part. Now the leg portion you can just show a smaller part leg. It's fine. And her hand in this way in the kid's hand. So now when in the village form, village area, when the females or the ladies of the house used to go in the forest, they used to take their kids with them. So they don't have to keep them in the house. So they used to take them. So they just depict this uh, kid and mother and the kid in this form. Yes, basically, again, the grass. I hope you are drawing this in the complete page because you will get to see that the more figures we are putting, the more beautiful it looks and the more uh, attractive you get to see the Varley painting. But very, very many, many differences. You can just use this thing like. I will, I will tell you that the, this this thing three things are common the head the neck and the body now just you can show this hand in the upper form the hands in the lower form the hands with half a curve and then straight so there are many uh, postures which you can generally see it in your uh, in in our sense uh, our daily routine so when we point out to someone we can just show the hand in this form or we are just talking to the someone while while talking. Sometimes we keep our hand on our waist and we talk. It's a general uh, human tendency that when we stand, we can just we just stand like that. So this is the that that posture we can show. So it's just they have just uh, taken it from the daily routine. As I said, you the daily routine what we they have seen or the what they have uh, what we follow basically. So this is this is it. So secondly, now we'll see the instrumental or the instruments which are present in the Varley painting. So which are made basically, which are made out of the natural uh, availability of material. So there are quite uh, what we say few, not few, but uh, similar figure, similar instruments. So like it's like a uh, dhol. So you might be knowing dhol is basically big. So you just have to show a bigger semicircle with a cup type. You can just show a cup. Then you have to show a base on which the dhol is kept. Now. As you all know, even today, even today, this this upper portion, this the upper portion when we bang it, this thing is made from the uh, skin of a animal, a buffalo or a what do you say, any any animal, but the animals whose skin are thick. So even in that older days, it is used to be made from this, and these are the ropes which they used to pull it and tighten it, tighten up the doll. So it gives a proper uh, volume or the proper uh, voice which uh, when they bang. You can just show this thing in the center. So this is basically a sticky gum form, uh, what we say, substance which they spread it on that doll. From the inner part, so when you bang it, you, it doesn't get uh, toned or it doesn't get break due to this thing. So this is dhol. Now, when we say how how to show a human uh, playing this, you can just show anyone, a female or a male, beside this thing. But remember that this dhol was and have been shown big. From that time, so you will just you will just have to show it bigger than the human figure. 
now as i said you this they are playing so the hand and the stick with a circular form second hand so just imagine that this man is playing it so when we use this the motion of that hand so we can use so this like this. so you can show a human figure here and second human figure here that both are playing that okay let me know if you're done so yeah go forward so okay. basically the the body of this dhol is also made from uh, something like dried pumpkin uh, no, 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 no. So basically, no, no. Basically, this is uh, made from the wood or the what we say. You might be knowing, ma'am. In India, there are uh, you get the wooden uh, instruments or the wooden uh, okay, basket. Okay. Okay. Basket. Okay. So it is it is weaved from the bamboo. Okay. So basically, that is that. That is this thing, which okay. is um with. not just that the bamboo but uh, they they plaster or we say you can they just plaster that thing inside from the gum so it get it gets hard so it doesn't okay. break okay okay so one is dhol second is dholak so dholak is basically a smaller part of dhol but it can be bone and it can be played so dholak you can just show a human figure now we will show a lady it can be played by anyone a lady a female a male but there is no discrimination in varli art that uh, the male have to play any instrument or the female have to play any instrument yes the tarpa the tarpa figure which i am going to show you which is most uh, respected or the most unique or uh, we can say it, it is basically uh, worshiped that figure uh, other that that instrument that instrument is only played by the uh, leader of the leader other other uh, leader of the tribe the chief of the tribe that that person plays that other than that no one no one can play that uh, uh, instrument so they have that their own uh, rules and regulation for that thing because it is it is known to be very unique and they worship that uh, instrument so dholak now we can see dholak the smaller part so you can just show a semi circular the same curve form but the smaller part same the ropes now you can just show the hands don't show the circular part on the upper end just the smaller stick which we can use so basically we can show this just like this or you can just show us stick part when wherein bit it is show it is it is to depict that it is uh, it is been tied by a rope okay, i will just uh, the name now there is a instrument called flute but in varli uh, tribe they have a instrument called putari so i will just write it down you can let to know so a t u t a r i so exactly same as a flute the size of a flute but bit different so it's like i just draw it the first and you will get to know just draw a conical a very long conical part and just show a semi circular on the upper end so it it is like this so human figure a human figure laying a sari so you can just show like this Mehir, did you say that the tarpa was only played by the leader of the tribe? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Now, now it is not followed like that. But in the ancient times, the leader of the tribe, or we can say, now there are gram panchayat or the village forms. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now it is like that they have that uh, 
particular person who plays the tarpa because uh, it's not easy to play that instrument ma'am because yeah. there are, there is a there is an actual uh, proportion of air or air to be blown in that mm-hmm. when that the sound comes uh, same as what we call shank we we right. might be know it right right, right. so it's exactly same so you can just show a single hand holding or else you can just show it holding by both hands and that's the flute right no that is not flute that is sutari i think sutari sutari flute type yeah. instrument yes 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 yes, yes ma'am so basically uh, this is made up of a bamboo or uh, any hollow branch of a tree and they add a in the corner part so it might be this portion they get a leaf of a tree any leaf of a tree or you or the bigger leaf they fold it and they put it inside this tree. and they add one leaf over here so the vibrations of this leaf when they blow the air it gives a sound from that so you have shown us a dholak dhol yes. and sutari right yes 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 ma'am Oh, and okay i'll uh, are you sure yes, the tarpa as well yes 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 i will show one uh, one or two figures more uh, okay. instrument more and i will okay. i will show the tarpa very nice thank you mehir okay i will raise this off so basically this are three of them which uh, generally are seen in this one more is like a dhol or a dholak a smaller part but the two sided dholak we can say so it's like it, it doesn't have any name so, uh, it, it is also called as dholak only but uh, the one which we saw is only on the single single side Yeah, we we draw it on the both sides, so it is like a human, uh, a figure of any male or female. So you can just show a line, but it is not a line; it is a rope. So we they show the rope like this, and now you can show a smaller one. in a bigger one this part with a stick in your hand so you don't have to show the dark portion in the between being a smaller one they just uh, tied with the skin and it gives a sound So that is a particular way of playing it. You might be knowing in different culture there are different instruments used. Okay, are we done? Yes. Okay. So four of them, and last we will see. Okay. So we saw dhol, we saw dholak, we saw sutari, or the flute, we can say, and we saw this uh, two-sided dholaks. So. now in india uh, there is a state called gujarat where they play dandiya and it is world famous so it's not i, I might not say it's dandiya uh, specifically but any two sticks which when they are banged it gives a particular uh, sound or creates the sound so in the varli culture also there are uh, some figures or some paintings where they depict that thing so i might not say it's dandiya basically 
ड over the head with a stick second hand like this so while dancing they just played so you can show this thing so it doesn't have any particular name for this but they just show this and generally when you see when you can just see, uh, see this videos of uh, wardly tribes and warli dance on youtube so you can see that this they playing these things so you will get to know everything about that so it's it's good to know that they are uh, they have carried that culture and their existing right now till date and they are following it i myself had gone to that village and i have seen them uh, living their life the way uh, they live their life and they have uh, lived their life the uh, the ancestors have lived their life uh nowadays it is it has been the modern culture but uh, even today when there are festivals when there are any what we say uh, deity uh, the moreover uh, in other culture or other uh, part of the world there is a god in india there is shiva ganpati everything in this they worship the nature so they don't have a particular god so they even worship a tiger they even worship a stone but they don't have that name so i will just show you after this so you can get to know <coughs> so what it is called so what what the tiger is called and what uh, the the second deity which they uh, worship they do, that the second deity doesn't have a name it's just the supreme power they worship they just they just uh, uh, in the ancient time they knew that there is a power which ha- which has been uh, protecting them and helping them and providing them the food so that's the thing the tiger because they knew that this is the strongest one so the second deity which they worship is somewhat like a semi circle and second So this is the deity we just worship in Warli painting. Okay, so as requested by Swati Ma'am, we will see the Arpa, the the most uh, ancient and the most famous. Even there are Arpa dance. there in the it so it is called tarpa t a r p a tarpa so as i said you it is made from a pumpkin a bamboo a leaf or what we say a leaf a rolled up leaf so now how it is made actually so a small pumpkin so it is a, it's a dried dried up pumpkin so which they uh, take the inner part out and just they make it hollow part secondly a bamboo a smaller ba- uh, the opening of the bamboo this is where the leaf is placed this is where the leaf is placed the op- the starting and the ending part the air flows in this this is where the leaf is placed so the uh, air flows here and the uh, what we say the voice comes out from here so now they just put a peacock leaf on the top so you can just show this like this okay so this is one type of tarpa which we see 
Very nice, Mihir. I'm just quickly, uh, doing, uh, quickly doing a time check. We are little over one hour. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Just, yeah. just I will show one more, one more. Uh, the the majorly which is used in the tarpa, uh, tarpa dance, with the human figure. So the human, the person who uh, use this or who who is to play this right now has to go from some uh, many, I can say some uh, worshiping or the cleansing part of the of his body. So that person has to be some something different. So the human figure, if it is male, you just have to show this part extra. Now the tarpa, the smaller uh, pumpkin, and even there is a bigger pumpkin which is cut. So now you can just show the string in the dotted form. A peacock leaf and a person holding it, and there is a painting which depicts a complete line of male, female, male, female. So there is a tarpa dance which they do. This person uh, plays this uh, instrument and they dance. I can just show you the some figures so you can get an idea of it. So this is the hand structure of the. Painting. So this is male. This is a female. So one female, one male. So they dance. They dance throughout the night to worship the deities and everyone. For so basically, this is done to thank the nature, the mother nature, for giving them the rain, the food, everything, the shadow, everything. So I just driven four of them. Uh, there are uh, drawing or paintings wherein we do a semicircle or a, a complete line or a complete uh, what we say oval form, the uh, spiral form. So the majorly the spiral form is much famous as a tarpa dance, and uh, I had done it in the my Warli art, which due to which my Warli painting uh, of Limta book record came to uh, notice was I made a uh, tarpa. Uh, this figure, which was around uh, almost uh, four feet uh, by four feet, so you can just imagine four feet by four feet of a tarpa, and the figures were almost around uh, four to five inches. So almost uh, there were around three hundred to three twenty figures in that tarpa. That's that is great, and he is a record holder for for that painting. Um, so. I am quickly going to look at some of the questions. So from Ahana, there was a question about uh, in the US, what can we use for Geru? Can we use mud or dirt found outside? Uh, uh, actually, Geru is available on the Amazon also, and it is all available on the uh, international market uh, also. So you can just get it from there, or you can just use the mud. Uh, the uh, fine mud, the brown mud, and uh, you can just add a uh, what we say heavy call in it. Okay. Water should be in the very uh, small quantity because uh, if you put more water, it will get watery and it won't uh, just stick in stick on the canvas or the paper you are trying to uh, draw. Mm -hmm. Mihir, can you adjust the camera a little bit? We cannot see uh, see your face totally, uh, yes, but. Yes, uh, but uh, are there any more questions from the attendees? Uh, am I visible? Uh, uh, mostly, mostly. Maybe one third okay. of your top part Just is visible. Just a second. Just a second. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any any more questions from from the attendees? Probably okay. not, but uh, thank you all so much for attending and I'm going to hand it over to Athena for, for closing and any other announcement you may have. Thank you, Mihir. That was 
very, very educational. Thank you for going through Thank and you. just explaining everything. I was able, I was able to draw along and follow you. So just thank you for that wealth of information. And we really, thank really you. appreciate you taking the time. And it's so great to meet a record, a world record holder in this kind of uh, whirly uh, painting. So I'm going to actually just stop, pause the recording right now. Um, but I just want to thank everybody.